You can directly control the keyframed animation of cloned objects using the fixed animation mode. And in this mode, the time attribute is directly applied to the keyframed animation on the source objects. So with 50 frames of animation on these jack-in-the-boxes, you see all 50 frames as I modify the time attribute. Now, of course, you can modify the time attribute dynamically through MoGraph effectors. So here on this plane effector, I've set the time offset to 50 frames. And what that means is that the time is going to be distributed from the beginning of the falloff at the yellow grid to the end of the falloff at the red grid. So we're seeing the complete animation from the period of time that the clone's axis enters the falloff to the period of time that it exits the falloff. What this means is that we can adjust the speed of the animation simply by adjusting the falloff of the effector. We can go in and adjust the length of this, shortening it in order to make the animation appear faster. And we can lengthen it to make the animation appear slower. We can also go into the plane effector's falloff and adjust the length of the falloff itself. So we can go ahead and set this to something like 500, and you'll see that we're hitting more of the clones, so we're actually going to see that animation overlap between clones. And we're also lengthening the time that each clone is in the falloff zone, so effectively the animation slows down. The time offset doesn't have to match the length of the original animation. We can reduce the time offset to 25 frames in order to only take into account the first 25 frames of our source animation, which in this case is the pop of the jack-in-the-box without the box closing once again. What's also cool is that you can actually go into the falloff function and change the spline to remap the animation. So for instance, we could go ahead and simply apply a ease curve on the animation or something that's going to be a little bit more obvious is if we actually go in and apply something like a hump to this animation. And in this case, we're actually going to see the animation play forwards completely and then play in reverse completely. And of course, if you want to, you can go ahead and make two humps on this and you'll see everything pop twice. One place where the fixed animation mode can especially come in handy is with the sound effector because the animation can be directly related to the amplitude of the sound. So here I've loaded a simple version of Pop Goes the Weasel and applied it in step mode so that the frequencies are distributed across the clones. And I also limited the frequencies so that we were only looking at a portion of the frequency range available to the sound effector. As you can see, what we get is the animation is played back according to the amplitude of each frequency. Now you do always need to keep in mind with the fixed animation mode that the animation playback is directly related to the time parameter and the falloff curve of your effectors. So if your falloff doesn't ramp smoothly in and out, you will see pops in the animation. Sometimes that's acceptable and sometimes it's not. Another thing to keep in mind is that you'll never actually see the animation start playback at its original speed and finish. The playback speed is always related to the strength and falloff of the effector. As long as you keep these limitations in mind, the fixed animation mode provides an incredible amount of flexibility in how keyframed animation is interpreted on your cloned objects. I hope you'll experiment more with the fixed animation mode, and if you enjoyed this tutorial, please like, share, and visit Cineversity.com for more great tutorials and resources.